Spoiler alert. From Season 3, Episode 2 begins on the morning after the incidents at the end of the previous episode, with Jade and Victor helplessly sitting inside the sheriff's office with a whole flock of sheep around them. As the monsters had released all the animals from the barn on the previous night, the residents had to get out on the road and usher them into a safe space since the animals were the only usable source of food left for them. Having waited the entire night, Jade finally decides to go check on Boyd and Tian Chen at the barn, and he is the first to come across the grisly scene. Jade sees Boyd tied to a pole inside the barn, with Tian Chen's lifeless and mangled body lying right opposite to him. The sheriff is heard murmuring something in a foreign language repeatedly, and the significance of this is revealed only later in the episode. At the moment, Jade confusedly asks him what had happened, and Boyd states how the monsters had forced him to watch Tian Chen being tortured, and then even left the keys to his handcuffs inside his own shirt pocket as a cruel tease. <laughs> Welcome to Movie Spy. Jade and Boyd take Tian Chen's body back to the town and place it inside the church for the time being, since they want to give her a proper funeral service. The fact that Boyd had survived the attack despite being right with the monsters inside the barn is not something that the townsfolk find suspicious, and so he does not have to face any questions regarding that matter. However, Donna confronts him about a different matter, as she is too stressed and torn up about the situation. Donna questions Boyd's decision to go after the animals so desperately, which essentially led to the violent death. According to her, it is much more important for the townsfolk to protect each other at all costs, but her heated mind does not make her think about the potentially violent condition that might arise in case of a food shortage. Boyd is furious at her, suggesting that he actually had a choice in preventing the death of his dear friend, and Donna eventually realizes her mistake as well. Christy speaks to Boyd later in the episode and tries her best to convince him to not blame himself for the death of Tian Chen. She is right in doing so, too, and she speaks about the time when Boyd had done the same for her earlier and encouraged her to keep her calm. It is once again evident from this episode that her fiancé, Mari, is not as connected to the town's resident as she is, naturally because of the fact that Christy has spent much more time at the place. While Christy tries to calm Boyd down and then later dresses up Tian Chen's body for the funeral with the help of Jade, Mari is back at the health center checking up on Fatima's health condition. But the sad death of Tian Chen, the beloved dining lady of Fromville, does hang like a shadow over everyone's mind throughout the day. Does Kenny attack the monsters? Away from the town, inside the wooden cabin in the forest, Kenny wakes up to enthusiastic shouts from Jim the next morning, with both of them having survived the night without any troubles. Jim tells Kenny of a miraculous discovery he had just made. The area they had spent the night at was filled with vegetables and crops, having grown wildly, and even the nearby lake was filled with fish. This is a joyous find, considering the fact that all the crops and plants at Fromville had died after the storm, and there was nothing left for the people to eat. Thus, the two men pack loads of vegetables and fish with them, and bring the supplies back to town, only to be greeted by the sad and morose faces of the townsfolk. The unfortunate irony of the situation is that Kenny happily shows people the vegetables he and Jim had just harvested from the forest without any idea that his mother had just died after trying to avoid a food shortage. Had the discovery been made a day earlier, Tian Chen would not have left her house to protect the cows and sheep, believing them to be the only source of food, and would not have died. Kenny is eventually told about his mother's death, and it leaves him devastated. But dealing with his father's violent death earlier seems to have taught him not to express much of his sorrows, and he instead portrays himself as being strong. But at the diner, he confesses to Christy that he does not want to see his mother's mangled body, because seeing his father like that had destroyed all the positive images of the man in his mind. While Kenny is understandably shocked and grieving, a feeling of rage also starts to settle in as the mysterious music player in the diner suddenly starts to play a celebratory song. The player was seen playing songs by itself earlier, too, 
and in this situation, it seemed like another cruel tease by the monsters, as if reminding the humans about how they had killed such a beloved member of the community. Kenny angrily shoves a tray into the music player and destroys it, but his mind is not calm, and he instead plans a bigger act of revenge. Later in the episode, Kenny is seen filling up large glass jars with moonshine at the abandoned bar, and he reveals to Boyd that he wants to attack the monsters with the alcohol. His plan is to go down to the tunnels, where Victor and Tabitha had earlier claimed to have seen entire groups of the monsters and to put all of them on fire. Boyd quickly realizes that trying to stop the young man would be a foolish decision, and so he agrees with the plan and even offers to accompany him. It is only at the spot near the opening of the tunnels that Boyd tells Kenny about how going into the tunnels blindly would probably just result in their death and put the lives of others in danger. Kenny understands Boyd's sentiment, and he cannot help but break down when he learns about Tian Chen's last words. As it turns out, the words that Boyd was murmuring at the beginning of the episode were what Tian Chen told him before her death, and she basically asked him to look after Kenny since he was going to be completely alone in life now. Kenny eventually decides to not foolishly attack the monsters, and he and Boyd return to the town to attend Tian Chen's funeral service at the church. What is wrong with Fatima? Fatima Hassan has been growing sicker with every passing day due to her pregnancy, and her boyfriend, Ellis, continues to be extremely supportive. He checks up on her almost every time that she spends too long in the toilet at the colony house, but Fatima tries to dismiss his concerns. It is mentioned that she has not been eating for a couple of days now because of her extremely nauseous state. But when Fatima sees a tooth come off loose from her mouth, she too is concerned about her health, and she agrees to go see Christy at the health center. Ellis takes her to the place, only to find that Christy is out, and so Fatima has to be checked by Mari, who assures the couple that her experience as a pediatric nurse has taught her a lot about pregnancy. All goes well as Mari diagnoses Fatima to be suffering from morning sickness and from malnutrition and asks her to eat properly. But the most odd thing happens when the couple return to Colony House and Ellis leaves Fatima at the doorstep before going to meet with his father, Boyd. All by herself, Fatima now smells something interesting and realizes that some of the Colony House residents have been trying to use the rotten vegetables for composting. But as she is left alone at the place, she picks up a rotten vegetable and eats it with great pleasure before doing the same with some more of it. This scene makes it seem like the baby growing inside of her is definitely not normal or human. And the fact that she is the only woman to have gotten pregnant in Fromville might mean that the monsters have some cruel plan regarding this situation as well. What does Victor's father reveal about his family? At the end of From Season 3, Episode 1, Tabitha Matthews was able to reach Victor's home address in the city of Camden, Maine, after she had somehow traveled back to the real world. Although the old man named Henry had initially tried to shoo Tabitha away, he did notice the lunchbox she was carrying with her and immediately recognized it as the one his son Victor had before he mysteriously disappeared one day some 30 years ago. In this week's episode, Tabitha wakes up and finds herself inside Henry's house, with the man even armed with a handgun. Henry reveals that she had lost consciousness on his front porch, following which he brought her inside and gave her shelter. But this act of kindness does not mean that Henry is immediately friendly with Tabitha, and he has a hard time believing her story, even after she shows him online news articles about the disappearance of herself and her family. Henry had gone to work one day 30 years ago, as per his normal routine, but he returned to an empty house with no idea where his wife and two children had gone off to. He naturally contacted the police, and a massive search was carried out for days, weeks, and then months, but with no trace of the three ever found again. Henry admits that many people eventually blamed him for the disappearance, believing that he had killed his wife and two children before disposing of their bodies somehow. But he could never let such rumors affect him. The grief of losing his family, along with a certain feeling of guilt for not being able to protect them, have lived on in his mind to this day. 
Therefore, when Tabitha suddenly appears with Victor's lunchbox and then tells him an unbelievable story about how he had met his son in some weird and impossible-to-find town, Henry thinks that the woman must have had something to do with his family's kidnapping. He even calls the police for his own protection, but then ultimately decides not to report Tabitha's emergence to them after she says something that lights up his eyes. While talking about what exactly had happened to her in Frumville, Tabitha speaks about the trip she had taken to the lighthouse in order to save the children in the tower, and Henry clearly finds some familiarity in this claim. He then reveals that during his days as a young adult, both Henry and his wife, Miranda, lived the hippie lives, often taking drugs for recreation. Although they changed their ways after Victor and his sister came into their lives, the couple decided to have one last night of fun when their children were young. Leaving the kids at their parents' place, Henry and his wife took some drugs, following which the woman started to claim some very weird things. Miranda kept saying that she heard voices that were calling out to her, as well as seeing visions of some faraway town where humans were trapped and could not leave. She painted pictures of all these visions, and when Henry shows them to Tabitha, she too has a hard time believing his claim. The many paintings made by Miranda in the past show people and places from Frumville, including the diner, the church, the two children who kept appearing to Tabitha, the soldiers who earlier attacked Jim and Jade, and even the boy in white. It was essentially some time after this that Henry's wife had gone missing, together with her two kids, and he firmly believes that she had gone off in search of Fromville, for she too mentioned a specific task. The woman claimed that she had been given the responsibility of saving the kids in the tower, just like what Tabitha had believed earlier, and so Henry is confident that Tabitha is now the chosen one, just like his wife once was. However, what this task involves and what exactly it requires one to do are still shrouded in mystery, and Tabitha feels that she has been sent back to the real world to help Victor and the people trapped in the strange place. There have been some suggestions earlier that Frumville might just be a world revolving around Victor and now clearly his mother, while the others are just stuck there. But what Tabitha must do to help bring her family and the others back to the real world still remains to be seen. Who calls Jim on the phone? Although Jim Matthews returns from his short trip to the forest with, with the hope of finding his missing wife, his eldest daughter, Julie, is clearly not happy about his sense of responsibility. Julie has her reasons, too, for as she tearfully reports about the monster's attack on her and Ethan from the previous night, she reveals how she has had to step into the role of a parent for her brother earlier, too. Before getting trapped in Frumville, Jim and Tabitha were reportedly struggling a lot to cope with the death of their youngest son, Thomas, and during that time, they completely ignored the emotions and needs of Ethan. Julie, a 15-year-old girl back then, had to take up the responsibility of tending to her young brother, and now she refuses to have to do the same again, since she is scared that Jim will die soon if he goes around on such needless adventures. Jim gets what his daughter is saying, and this is why he allows Julie and Ethan to visit the barn at the end of the episode while he returns to his home. However, the phone at the house starts to mysteriously ring, which in itself is a very peculiar incident since nobody uses the phone in Frumville. When Jim picks up the call, his dead son Thomas speaks to him from the other side, revealing at the end of From Season 3, Episode 2, that the dead can somehow communicate with the living now. Or it could be that this is another ploy being used by the monsters to torment the humans, and this seems like a more possible scenario. How this situation pans out in the upcoming episodes will be very interesting to watch as well.